It's been said, if you want to get married, sow a seed. But God has sent Apostle Takim to tell us, if you want to get married, come into my manifest presence. It's been said, if things are not okay with you, it's your foundation that is responsible or some altars in your village. But God has sent his teaching prophet to tell us, if things are not okay with you, it is the foundation of the Lord that is missing in your life. The Cry of the Spirit Ministries in Nairobi presents Wherever the prophetic God and apostolic Christ. teaching ministry of Richard E. Esther King. Jesus. Now, follow us to the sanctuary. At the end of this journey today, every detail of smallness in your life will be erased. Amen. Completely. Now, you are not entering, entering 2024 small. No. You see, if you want to enter small, then you better leave the service right now because you will get to a point that it will be impossible to enter small. Yeah. Impossible. Because you will rise. You will shine. Because your light will come. And the glory of the Lord will rest upon you. In the name of Jesus. Smallness is not your portion. Greatness is your portion. But there's a path to follow to get there. Look at Zechariah chapter 4. What the Bible says there. Zechariah chapter 4. Verse 6. So he answered and said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. Now, this is a scripture that tells us the basis for all that God wants to do. This was where Mary stood to tell the angel, Be it unto me. I come to your word. If you know that it is not by might, it's not by power, then you rest. Then you don't doubt God. Because you only doubt if it is your ability. If it's God's ability, you'll be stupid to doubt. Because whatever God wants to accomplish in the life of his own is not by might. It's not by power. It is by his spirit. He now says in the next sentence, verse 7, Who are you, O great mountain? Now, look at that word, great mountain. I don't know why it is now we'll see that or the second session. Write it down. Great mountain. Keep it somewhere. What we are dealing with is captured in the Bible as great mountain. You cannot deal with something great while you are small. Are you understanding what I'm saying? You cannot deal with something great while you are what? God will never send a small man to a great devil. He's not insane. I repeat, God will never send a small man to what? To a great devil. God is not insane. When you see God sending a small man to a great devil, the, man is, the man's or woman's smallness is just a small screen. It is God packaging greatness in little things. So if you look at what the Bible says, Who are you, O great mountain? Before the river, you shall become a plain and it shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of what grace grace moreover the word of the lord came to me saying the hands of zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple his hands shall also finish it then you will know that the lord of hosts has sent me to you everyone read verse 10 for who has despised the days of small things read one more time for who has despised the days of small things. I stopped there. The reason why it is stupid to despise the days of small things in God is because even if the days are still small, there's a greatness that makes them big. The things could be small. Let's assume a church and the church just have two members and the pastor starts the church with two members or three members or only him alone. 
if, if the pastor walk on paths of greatness, a church of two people can become two million in less than seven years. I have told you before, you cannot just be having 30 people in 30 years. There's no greatness there. That is smallness. There's no greatness there. So, the days of little beginning huh, are blessed days if the people of little beginning can follow pathways of greatness. I repeat, the days of little beginning are very beautiful days if the people of the days of little beginning can follow the pathways of greatness. So it doesn't matter how small you are. It doesn't matter how your beginning is. It could look so gory or whatever. I want to show you pathways to follow, to get to places that are beyond your dreams. The Bible says it's able to do much more than we can ever ask or think. That is greatness. Greatness from heaven cannot be described in human diction. It cannot be described in human diction. There's no capacity on earth to describe what comes from heaven. We just speak it in... It is when you get to a time you now realize that certain meanings of words we are too weak to communicate the essence. Certain meanings of words were too weak to communicate the essence. So, the reason why we don't despise this of little beginning is because if a great God begins something small and he put his people on the path of greatness, the small becomes great. Over time, in another word, time unfolds the mystery of greatness in God. Are you understanding me? Time does what? It unfolds the mystery of greatness. God could begin with you small, but God will not leave you small. Because if you are small, the kingdom of God will suffer a deficit. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you are small, the kingdom of God will suffer what? There will be a deficit in God's kingdom because what the kingdom of God is confronting is great. Great mountain. Is somebody hearing me? Write this down. It takes greatness to make any kingdom impact in this world. It takes greatness to make any kingdom impact in this world. It takes greatness to make any kingdom impact in this world. So me, any. We are moving to our year of impact and for some of us we are already there. It depends on your faith. But do you know that without greatness there can be no impact let me use a very little example to make it clear because you, your taste for greatness have to be kindled if it's not kindled we can't go forward you will know what we are looking for God blesses contentment but not smallness there's a difference between contentment and smallness is someone hearing me? You have to develop a taste for greatness, even in your contentment. You have to develop what? A taste for greatness, even in your contentment. There can be no impact without greatness. So when God is saying it's your year of impact and you are small, you will pass through the year and make no impact. Because without greatness, you cannot make impact. We are talking about impact. We are talking about leaving a mark. For instance, if you take a little hammer and hit at this wall, it will not break. But when you bring a bulldozer, it's not just this pillar that will break. The entire building is going down. There's a bulldozer that when it stands in this side, it can bring down the whole of this building in 10 minutes. 
because the bulldozer is great so it can make impact on the building but when something is not great it cannot make visible impact sometimes you are not making impact financially and other aspects of your life not because you are not prayerful not because you are not fasting not because you are not living a pure life purity prayer fasting without greatness only produce sparks not impact are you here i repeat purity fasting prayer without greatness on your life will only produce sparks it will never make impact that's why some of you your families will look at you and say where is your christianity all this your holiness you are not allowing a man to touch you and yet there's no impact go and meet them let them touch you that's what your families will say the unbelievers who don't understand there's nothing wrong with being pure my friend i'm just telling you that purity without greatness in it produce no impact and because some people try to be pure and they live a pure life under god they pursue holiness and repentance but because there was no greatness in their life their purity made no impact they backslid it and went back to the devil they backslid it they say all oh, this christianity is not producing anything so why am i doing it and before you know the first man they meet some of them are so unfortunate that they catch diseases and now run back to god for healing if there is no greatness on your life your serving god will be a reproach <laughs> that's why this meeting is very important these hours with God is very important. If there's no greatness in your life, your serving God will be what? A reproach. When people are saying, where is your God? If they say that for 10 years and God show up, no problem. Because there's a season where people will ask you, where is your God? But if your own has been perpetual, where is your God? Where is your God? It means there's no greatness in your life. If there's greatness in your life, your fasting will make kingdom impact. Your prayer will make kingdom impact. Your purity will make kingdom impact. I have told you before that Joshua fasted only from morning till evening. Only 12 hours. Only 12 hours Joshua fasted. Let me give you the result. You remember the story of Achan? When they came back and they have lost the soldiers, <laughs> The Bible said Joshua and the elders fell on their face on the ground from morning to evening. Morning to evening means 12 hours. Not 72 hours. Not 365 days. Not 70 days praying and fasting. Not 3 days dry. The guy only fasted for 12 hours. And God came down by evening. The first result was he identified the problem and remove it the next result was he went back to take back the victories that he was denied and the bible said they conquered not just ai they wiped away all those nations and it got to a point it, the, the thing kept flowing until one day joshua looked at the sun and said stand still 12 hours fasting somebody was able to identify the problem got the victory and spoke to the sun and the moon to stand and they obeyed but you are own fasting three days some of us have done seven days dry until this bone has come and we are coming like what's that animal ostrich the pastor sent you to prayer mountains, heaven's gate, heaven's valley, and gong hills. They, they send everybody to fasting now. Why them are praying on the people, on their tithe and their offering? The devil always wants you to be so stupid. Serving God stupidly. Twelve hours of fasting. Up to today, the earth have not recovered. 
is because Joshua had greatness in his life. When a small man fasts, the result is different. When a great man fasts, the result is different. Ask your neighbor, who are you? I'm not saying, where do you come from? You could come from Luo or Kikuyu or Kamba or whatever. As a person in God's kingdom, who are you? Is there greatness in your life? Ask your neighbor, is there greatness in your life? Tell your neighbor, I don't need the answer. <laughs> you will understand that the result in your life, you put so much effort and get very little result because there's no greatness on your life. Peter was like that. There was no greatness in his life. And he toiled all night and caught nothing. One day, a man with greatness just stole him, put the net to the other side, and they caught fishes that he needed partnership. When great people move, things happen. When small people move, nothing happens. The same movement. Is someone hearing me? The same movement, the same thing. There is fasting we fast to maintain our spiritual health. That one, you do it every day of your life, no problem, just to keep yourself healthy in the spirit. But there's fasting we fast to make impact. Those ones should not be three days drive, 70 days, uh, like to, from January now, there will be those that will be on 21 days, some will be on 40. There's nothing wrong with that. If you are doing it to keep your spiritual health alive, but if you are doing it for God to move, how bad? You are too small. You don't need 40 days fasting for God to move. You are too small. 40 day fasting is to keep yourself in your eagerness so that you'll be held in the spirit. But when you want God to move, greatness will make him move without you doing anything. Don't you see Jesus? He got to the grave of Lazarus. Lazarus come forth because of his greatness. The dead have no choice. Do you know why when Jesus comes, how we are going to be raptured and why we'll be raptured? The Bible says he will come with the voice of an archangel. Listen carefully. Jesus will have sent Gabriel to come and rapture us with his voice. Because Gabriel is an archangel. Jesus will have sent Michael, the warrior angel, to come and rapture us out of our graves. But though they are great, but they are not great enough to defeat death. There's only one person whose name has been highly lifted above every name. Are you understanding me? The greatness in him. He will just stand in the cloud and sound the advance and will be out of our graves and our body will be transformed. When greatness moves, everything changes. You need greatness on your life. All your effort in your business. Why the business remains small? Because there's no greatness on your life. You don't need greatness on your business. You need greatness on your life. When there's greatness on your life, you open a little shop, it becomes big. When there's greatness in your life, you start your marriage in a very poor way where there's no food to eat. I can't forget the man of God who said he and his wife, after the wedding, the only thing they had in their house was the little wedding gift. They went, uh, they moved into their house and were sleeping on the bare f- floor. But today, greatness has changed everything. If greatness does not change you, nothing else can change you. Only greatness can change your life. You need greatness on your life. It's my prayer that at the fifth session, when we'll be crossing, God will pour greatness upon anyone who does not have that anointing for greatness, that anointing of the Holy Ghost that makes us great, you will go home with it. In the name of Jesus, enough of struggling, enough of men putting so much effort and getting nothing a little result the same effort you are hard 
to walk in. You are diligent. You are meticulous. You wake up very early in the morning. You sleep very late. You are very careful. You are not wasteful. Despite respecting the principles of success, you are still backward. It's because there's no greatness on your life. If there's greatness of your, on your life, every principle you respect produces result. It produces result. Look at great Moses. He stepped into Egypt. He told Pharaoh, let my people go. The guy thought it was a joke. By the time Moses was through in Egypt, the Bible says even the dogs could not bark. People, little dogs could be barking at you today. Just follow the pathway of greatness. A time is going to come that your greatness will shut the mouth of your mockers. Is somebody hearing me? I say your greatness will shut down the mouth of your mockers. People who are saying all kinds of nonsense without understanding. You keep working with God. You need to understand the path of greatness. Because when you walk on in the path of greatness, greatness reflects in what you do. When you walk in the path of greatness, greatness reflects in what you do. So, why do we need to be great? It takes greatness to make any impact. It takes greatness to make any impact. Let me run through certain scriptures. We don't understand that the greatest opposition we have on earth is not operating in smallness. It operates in greatness. Greatness is not a monopoly of God. Even the kingdom of darkness, there is greatness. Are you understanding me? Do you know why in the early church, okay, let me not go there. Look at First John chapter 5. First John chapter 5. I want to show you something. Verse 18. We know that whoever is born of God does not sin. But he who has been born of God keeps himself and the wicked one does not touch him. Hallelujah. How many of you love to be in that realm? May God establish you there. Actually, some of you have been established there already. That's why I see you don't face attacks again. Your attacks have ceased. How many of you, your spiritual attacks have ceased? That scripture has been fulfilled in your life. Because God has taught you how to keep yourself. Then the wicked one now cannot touch you. It means there is a way you live your life and the wicked one will be touching you. And there is a way you live your life, he will not touch you. But I'm taking you somewhere deeper. Do you know? <laughs> Let me use this microphone as an example. I know that you are of God. That is this mic. What's the next statement? We know that whoever is born of God does not sin. And he who has been born of God keeps himself. And the wicked one does not touch him. So, this mic, born again, keeps itself. Nobody is touching it. The mic is there. When you want to touch it, he who owns the mic will hit your hand. So the mic is protected. The mic is untouchable. But the mic is not making impact. It has no meaning. Is someone hearing me? It's not helping anybody. It's not making any kingdom impact. Though the wicked one cannot touch it, but it's not making any impact. The mic will only make impact when it's being used. Are you understanding me? Look at what the devil can do. Your work with God could paralyze him from touching you. 
but your smallness will prevent you from touching him. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Can you write that down? Your walk with God can prevent the devil from touching you. But, and your smallness can also prevent you from touching him. So, you live in a world of Satan does not touch you, you does not touch him. So when you not die and fulfill your days and get to heaven, you will never hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Because you fought no battle. I want to ask you, go and search in the Bible. If you see it, I will give you maybe $500. Where in the Bible did Jesus stand to receive Lazarus when Lazarus died? Not the Lazarus that, you know the story of Lazarus and the rich man. So when Lazarus died, did Jesus stand on his feet to receive him? The Bible says he went to Abraham's bosom. They just think, Lazarus, wake up, enter there. But when Stephen was dying, he has not even died. He was still confronting the devils. Wait for part three, you understand that? He was still confronting the devils and Jesus stood up and was applauding that is my boy that is my boy he knows what to do he knows how to touch the kingdom of darkness he knows what to say even though they kill you that is not smallness that is greatness that's the way you die and your death is greatness that's the way you die and your death is smallness and jesus was clapping and applauding a lot and 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 stephen the stone him, the Bible says he slept. He did not even die. He slept. Jesus took his spirit from his body and said, welcome home. Why? He kept himself. The wicked one did not touch him, but he touched the wicked one. When God said, it's your year of impact, it's your year of touching the wicked one. That a man is too weak if you understand me. It's your year of touching the wicked one. You touch him in your family. You touch him in your neighborhood. You touch him wherever you go. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. Who is he who will be at ease in Zion, my friend? It's our year of touching him. Because God has helped us to achieve. He can't touch us. None that he can't touch us. We are out to touch him. That is why you will be able to tread upon serpents and scorpions and nothing shall by any means touch you because he cannot touch you. Do you understand what I mean? Now, now sit down. Let me explain one thing. How many of you have watched boxing between a weak person and a, and a, and a stronger person? Have you ever watched Mike Tyson? Some of you just boss. There are some people that he, he comes on them and light, like, like lightning. Before they realize the match was, is over. I mean, they enter the ring. What they are doing? Like, the guy comes, and the guy was, ah, ah, ah. the guy woke up. Ah. Have, they, have they fought the fight? That's how the devil will behave around you. In the name of Jesus, you will bounce on him and break him down and paralyze his walk. In the name of Jesus, why? You have achieved the first mark. He cannot touch you. None that he cannot touch you. You are at liberty to touch him, to stop his works anywhere. Is somebody hearing me? It takes greatness to deal with the devil. It takes greatness. It takes greatness. Look at what the Bible says in verse 19. We know that we are of God. That may cannot touch us. And the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. It's our job to stop his sway on the face of the earth. It's our job. So if the wicked one is not touching you, praise the Lord. But are you touching him? Why did God place us on earth? 
<laughs> Why did he say, I give you power over all the powers of the enemy? Why did he say so? Why, why did he? Why is it that the first time he came out of the grave? What did the Bible say in the book of Matthew chapter, chapter 28? He said, Go you into all the world. He said, he said, all powers in heaven and on earth have been given unto me. Therefore, go ye. He didn't tell them, go ye, when he met them at first. When God achieved the exploit of putting you in a realm where the devil cannot touch you, that's when he sent you to the devil. That's when he sent you to open the church. That's when he sent you to start the ministry. That's when he sent you to go for the prayers, to, to deliver people. That's when he sent you to pray for the sick. If the wicked one can still touch you, God will not send you because God does not have ambulance. God does not have Red Cross. Do you, do you see any Red Cross in the Bible? It doesn't have. So, so it doesn't want people sent into the field and the enemy kill them. God will first of all walk on you, teach you how to live your life where the wicked one cannot touch you. That is the meaning of sit down at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool, until I bring you to the point where the enemy cannot touch you. When he now brings you to that point, he now tells you, go ye. Go to that village. Go and meet that witch doctor. Are you understanding me? Go to that family that is dying too early. Go and stop the dead. Go to that village where all the teenagers get pregnant at, at, at 18, 19, 20. They cannot even graduate from high school without having babies crying, mama, mama, hey, hey, hey. You're supposed to go to high school without a child around you. Go there and stop the speed of perversion. When you get to the point where the wicked one cannot tell you, cannot touch you, God cannot mobilize you. We should never be happy with the wicked one not touching us while we are not touching him. That is not how to live. <laughs> are you understanding me? The end time army will not function that way. Are you understanding me? Will not function that way. Now, for us to touch the wicked one, greatness is required. For us to make impact, greatness is required. Greatness is required. How many of you are believing God to touch the wicked one in your year of impact? May God fulfill that wish of yours. In the name of Jesus. Because your value in the kingdom and your credibility in the kingdom is a function of how many devils you have pushed. Your value in God's kingdom is a function. Look at David's reputation increase when he dealt with Goliath. They are devils you have to push down for your name to become known. Is somebody hearing me? There are devils you have to push down for you not to be rejected. This one, the spirit, I'm suffering from the spirit of rejection because there are no demons you have brought down. Bring the demons down and see how people will be looking for you. <laughs> Bring the devils in charge of in charge of toiling down and see how people will be giving you money freely. Bring the devil in charge of any activity down and see the glory. Didn't God attach our prosperity to the release of our destinies? Now the release of your destiny must bury a devil. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't know whether you heard me. That word is for warriors. It's not for civilians. It's for soldiers of the cross that the release of my destiny to, to bury a devil out there where my destiny is unleashed. A demon should cease functioning. When my destiny is released, a demon should go back to hell. And tell Satan, enough. I'm not going to the earth again. Because somebody has a match. I rack up or settle here. Somebody has a match. It takes greatness to humble demons. It takes greatness. That's why you must taste for greatness. You must crave for greatness. 
You must ask for greatness. You must desire greatness. Go to Revelation chapter 12. Let me show you something. You must test for greatness. You must desire greatness. Great people cannot be ignored. No, 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 no. Great people in God's kingdom cannot be ignored. <laughs> they cannot be ignored. One little statement, everybody is shaking. Great people cannot be ignored. Is somebody hearing me? When a great man say, good morning, it's different from when a small man say, good morning. It's not the same. Are you understanding me? When a great man say, good morning, you value it with all your blood. When a small man say, good morning, you would think he has come to collect your money. Is someone hearing me? Look at greatness in this world, for example. Can you imagine the president of your nation calling your phone in the morning? You just wake up in the morning, your phone ring. And I say, Bwana I am your president, Ruto. You will fall. In fact, you will say it's a prank. You say if it's joke, you, in fact, you will switch off your phone. That is greatness in this world. Now, let your uncle <laughs> call you early in the morning. You will switch off the phone. <laughs> that is the difference. The same call. The same call. Are you understanding what I'm saying? I'm just trying to give you a sample why you should test for greatness. If you are still not significant, go for greatness. If you are still not important to people, go for greatness. If, if people can just dismiss you with, with a hand like this, go for greatness. If people can do without you, go for greatness. If people do not need you, don't blame them. Go for greatness. You are too small to be needed. Don't get angry with anybody. Are you, are you understanding me? Don't get angry with anybody. You are too small to be needed. A man of God shared a story with us. He said he was going to, in 1982, he, had, he would drag his wife. Is it 82 or 86? He would drag his wife to Lagos to go and visit a particular couple just to pray with them. The husband will be so furious and tell the wife, close that door, close that door. They will close the door. They will knock, 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 knock. The people will not open. And they will go back. After the wife will call again, hey, we are so sorry. When you came, we were not around. They were around. Come. When the man carries his wife again, and they will, they will knock, knock. They will not open. Seven years later, when greatness came, the man and the wife is the one pulling the wife to go to the man, fill a form and they hand over the form to the secretary. Secretary will say, come back in two months. And they will wait for two months patiently and go. The day they appear before the man, the first thing they did, they bow down. That is called greatness. When people are dismissing you like this, don't get angry. Don't look at them and say, May God punish you. For what? No, no, for what? Why would God punish them? For what? God is a just God. Because they ignore you. No. Do you know how many Christians are praying for them and die that God should keep people who ignore them? You are being stupid. He will not. You are too small to be acknowledged. That's why anybody can dismiss you. Everybody in family, mwah, mwah. Like a fly. And God is saying no more. I am showing you the part of greatness. Because without greatness there will be no impact. And God wants you to make impact. Can I hear amen here in the house? In those days when you are talking. They will say hey keep quiet who are you? But when greatness comes. They will say please can you talk to us? 
in those days when you are small you you you, you call them on phone they will not even pick but when greatness come they'll be the one asking you when have you forgotten us why are you not even calling us may god change your story i said may god change your story you are moving to a new realm in christ in the name of jesus tell me greatness i didn't hear you shout this louder greatness shut the sky without one heart that is what you should be testing for stop getting angry with people Bitterness will take you to hell. Stop being bitter. When they say you are nobody, take note. Don't take offense. Take what? Don't take offense. Take note. Don't take offense. When they say who are you, take note. Don't take offense. When they say who are you in this family, take note. Don't take offense. Don't send their pictures for prayer. Don't send their names for prayer. It's a challenge. Are you understanding me? Retire to your ego nest and check all the statements. They say, I am nothing. They say, who am I? It means I am too small. Lord, enlarge my greatness. Give me greatness and comfort me on every side. I don't want to be small. That's why we are here. As, are you understanding me? That's how we are here in this school. May God increase you on every side. Yeah. Write this down. The great God does not create small people. The great God does not create small people. Before we read the book of Revelation 12, let me show you an example of that. Go to the book of Numbers chapter 10, chapter 14. The great God does not create small people. That is why if you have a call of God upon your life, if you are sure, just keep working with him. You cannot be small. The great God does not create small people. They could be small by man's calculation, but by kingdom impact, they are not small. Is somebody hearing me? Right, maybe you can write that first in your before we go. Just write the great God does not create small people, so I cannot be small. It's as simple as that. The great God does not create small people, so I cannot be small. People are talking to you anyhow because you are small. Don't get angry. Don't take offense. Don't be taking you. This, uh, this, my, my brother said this. My, my mother said this. My, my auntie said this. My father said this. My teacher said this. I came to Crown of Spirit. My pastor have also said this. I said it because you are small. That's why I said it. Are you? Are you we are all saying it because you are small. In fact, that's why I brought you to this school. <laughs> Me and God brought you to the school so that you will, by the time we cross to 2024, you will say bye bye to smallness. I will be significant. I will be called. I will be needed. I will be wanted. You see, it is when people need you that they give you money. It's when people need you that they give you money. <laughs> When they don't need you, that you, you, you are the one asking for money. When they need you, you earn money. Don't you know that you earn money through your value to people? It's your value. Somebody can just call you one day and give you a million. Not because of any other thing, but because of your value. Are you, are you understanding what I'm saying? And it is your greatness that makes you valuable. Your greatness, your kingdom greatness. Look at, look, at, look at what God said to Moses. Are you in the book of Numbers chapter 14? Look at verse 11. Then the Lord said to Moses, How long will these people reject me? How long will they not believe me? With all the signs which I have performed among them, I will strike them with the pestilence, disinherit them, and I will make of you 
a nation greater and what mightier than them. Touch your neighbor and say, Wake up. Nothing God creates remains small. So don't be small. If I catch you being small by next day, I won't tell you what I would do. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do you see what God said? I know some of us, our mentality has been damaged with we must do this, we must do that, which is good. But, 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 look at this. God told Moses, because he was furious, these guys have seen my miracles in Egypt. And they still keep messing around. I want to disinherit them. Not, that means I want to wipe them away from it. Do you know that God can just send one disease and all of them have died? He said, I want to wipe them away. They make you, you, not you, only you, Moses. Hi, God. Each time I think of that scripture, I said, it means even though I'm alone in life, that is not a minus. <laughs> only you. He said, you, Moses, I am going to make you greater. How many of you understand English language? Greater means the one he is wiping away is great. But this one I am bringing will be greater. So he did not say, I will make you great than them. It means that would have mean they, will be, they were small. But he said, I will make you greater. It means they were not small. There is nothing God great that is small. Nothing. So, if smallness is our characteristics, we should check who gave us. I'm not talking about physical things now. We should check who gave us because we cannot make global impact in smallness. Kingdom impact is not possible. Kingdom impact discharge devils. Kingdom impacts paralyze the demonic. Kingdom impact break chains and lose people from captivities. So go back to Revelation chapter 12, verse 1. Remember what we wrote down, great mountain. You remember? Now a great sign appeared in heaven. Is it a small sign? Talk to me. Was it a small sign? Oh, you are still opening the book of Revelation. I hope you are not opening Zachariah. I told you to buy good Bibles. We have them in the bookshop where you have the ribbon so that you turn like this. The time is too short to be spent. <laughs> I told you we have five sessions. We will finish it even though it's next week. Me, I'm not going to leave any session. Are you understanding? <laughs> now a great sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, on her head a garland of twelve stars. Then, being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, what a great, fiery red dragon having seven horns and seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his head. Now listen. The sign that appeared in heaven was described as what? Great sign. The other one that appeared was described as what? Sign. But the content of the sign was great. That tells you the greatness of God is greater. But Satan also has greatness. So you cannot deal with him in smallness. Should I send you to an address in the Bible to go and ask them? You know the house. You know the guy called the sons of Skeva. What did they say happened to them? The Bible said they were going about. Come out! Come out! Come out! They now met one great one. Come out! He, he first did like this. And continued what he was doing. Come out! Come out! He did like this again. 
continue this. By the time they went, they now said, come, 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 come here. They came. Because when great people talk, you move. When greater people, you see, when you are talking, it becomes great has not come. When the great comes, shoo. so why they were, come on, come on, come on. When the guy now began to talk, he came like this. Because if they didn't come close, how did he beat them? He must have called them, come. And they came, la crap, shaka, la crap, shaka. With their bike foot in their hand. <laughs> and he asked them, can you please come close? He came like this. Because he never wanted to run and pursue them. You know, you know they would jump through the window and disappear. And he wanted to beat them thoroughly. So, 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 he called them. Come. And he came. And I said, what, what were you saying? We were, we were saying, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preached, come out. From where? From this body. And now look at them. By that time, he has held two of them like this. With one hand. Paul, I know. The seven of them. Jesus, I know. Those are great people. When they talk, we shiver. When they talk, our gates shake. The gates of hell does not stand. When they speak, because their greatness shocks the gates of hell. But you, who are you? You are too small. And before they could say Psalm 23, he beats seven. One man beating seven people. That man is great. Beat seven of them and they left that place. That is how demons in cities are beating pastors out of the cities. Demons in villages are beating pastors after the villages. You go to certain village, you see some pastors have been beaten thoroughly. Their church is having them and some cats and some dogs. While some pastors have been beaten thoroughly, they are not in immorality, all kinds of lies and wickedness. They are in this uh, uh, multi-level marketing. The other multi-level marketing, they are opening this business. Open, they have been beaten by the demon of the land. They don't make impact again. Sometimes they use the fathers of the land to beat them. Demons of the land use fathers of the land if you don't understand. Is it not in the Bible? You think it's in Kenya I'm talking about? It's in the Bible, First Kings chapter 13. The demon of the land use the father of the land to kill the young prophet because of greatness. The father of the land had greatness. The young prophet had no greatness. That is why God warned him. Don't go by the way you are coming from. You don't have the greatness to walk anyhow. When you have greatness, you go everywhere. When you don't have, God have to guide you. Is someone hearing me? Listen carefully. That was how the young prophet was killed. Greatness. The young prophet was killed because he never followed the pathways of greatness. God gave him pathways. He walked out of them and lost his greatness. God can put greatness on your life, but if you don't follow the pathways, you lose it. That's why we are looking at the pathways of greatness. I'm, I'm just laying foundation for that. The pathways of greatness. So, this very moment, we are looking at the necessity for greatness. You need to be great. I don't know. I, I, I wish I can open your brain and shout on it. You need to be great. Help me shout into the ear of your neighbor. Be my mouth. Why don't you go? They didn't hear you. Want to go? Look for the next person and tell the person, your smallness is not needed. Your smallness is not needed. Get up. Change where you sit. You, you will come back to your seat or just find somebody sitting in Kakamega or Kawangware. Have you found them? Tell them that. Point your finger to them. Wait, 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 wait. Point your finger. Tell them your smallness, your smallness. is not needed. Now tell the person, may God give you greatness. On this mountain today, may you discover the path of greatness. In the name of Jesus, give God a mighty shout. As you go back to your seat. Hallelujah.
Because the dragon is a great dragon. So the sons of the kingdom must operate in greatness. The greatness of God. He's a great God. He's a great God. He's a great God. All I know. We have to operate in his greatness to humble devils. Are you understanding me? What we are dealing with is not small. Being great is not an option. It's a necessity. Being great is not an option. I wish I, I, wish I can uh, nail this in your spirit. I remain with you forever. Being great is not an option. It's a necessity. So long as the end time kingdom advance is concerned, being great is not an option. It's a necessity. That's why we must discover the parts. And walk in it. So that in the next five years, by the time you are hitting another, God, God giving, keeping us in the same, we, we talk about another uh, crossover apostolic school. It will be a school of testimonies. Amen. Where you will say, yes, I was in the last school. I hit greatness. Look at how I have become. Some of you will have massive churches you are leading. Some of you will have massive businesses you are leading. You say, before that meeting, my, the highest amount of money I've given to God was 100,000. But now I am giving 10 million. I'm giving 100 million to God. I have never given in dollars to God before then. But after that meeting, I began to give money in dollars to God. Is somebody hearing me? May your greatness speak on every side. After this, in the name of Jesus. Do you know that you better ask God for greatness than to ask him for money? You better ask God for greatness than to ask him for money. You ask God for greatness than to ask him for any other thing. Because when greatness comes, it brings the money. When greatness comes, it brings the marriage. When greatness comes, it brings the people. When greatness comes, it brings the success. When greatness comes, it brings the victory. When greatness comes, it brings a change of life and a change of story. When you become great, even your house cannot keep you. When greatness meets you, when smallness kept you, would eject you. So sometimes you are trying to move to another house. You cannot move to a bigger house in smallness. Some of you, you try to move, you move, you move, and they still move you back. God is saying, wait, let me lift you. Wait, let me give you greatness. That's what God is saying here to you. You are struggling in a particular... God is saying, wait, 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 wait. You have been using your own strength. It's not by might. It's not by power. It's by a greatness that my Holy Spirit will bring to you. It's coming upon you today. But you must ask. Are you ready to ask? Stand on your feet. Look at Psalm 71. We cannot deal with nations that are greater and mightier than us if we don't ask for greatness. We cannot fulfill kingdom assignments that are bigger than us if we don't ask for greatness. Are you in Psalm 71? Verse 20. Let's begin from verse 19. Verse 17 is better. Oh God, you have taught me from my youth. How many of you can identify with that scripture? That said, let's have God as a youth. You have taught me from my youth. And to this day, I declare your wondrous works. Now also, when I am old and gray-headed, oh God, do not forsake me. Until I declare your strength to this generation. Your power to everyone who is to come. May that be you. May God keep all of us. Even when we are gray-headed, we'll have the strength to declare his power to this generation. In the name of Jesus. He now went on to say, also your righteousness, oh God is very high you have done what great things oh god who is like you look at verse 20 you who have shown me great and severe troubles shall revive me again and bring me up again from the 
depths of the earth. Everyone read verse 21. You shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. One more time. You shall increase my greatness and comfort me. We're going to pray. What are we asking? Lord, give me greatness. 